Hi, I'm Dave Smith for Police One, and this is Roll Call Reality Training. Well, today we go to northern Utah, where a subject armed with two handguns decided to create havoc in an emergency room. Now, the suspect, who'd been turned down the night before when he went to the ER for more pain meds, had returned. Now, he had two guns, a 9mm and a Derringer, and once he made entry, he's confronted by the security officer. Watch this. Okay. Down here. Yeah. 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 Okay. They fucking help. Nobody hey, look hey, through that fucking Alright? Keep talking. Don't come through the fucking door. Please. Now the security officer fortunately has two parole officers who were with a suspect in the emergency room and when the confrontation went down he went and got them. Now watch as the officer and the two agents make a plan. You guys called this back? Yeah, call this back. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to get How can I do this? He does have a gun. Okay, I'll complain. Uh, what can I do? How do I do this? Go through the outpatient. Ask the doctor Jew, he'll be able to show you. Hey! What do you need? Fucker, do you hear me? I hear you! What do you fucking now, as the security okay, officer continues to engage the suspect in conversation, Agent Clint Lind makes his way around to the front and then makes entry. Watch the confrontation. Now, as you saw, the suspect turns toward the agent and raises his weapon, forcing the agent to fire three rounds. Now, these strike the suspect in the groin, the arm, and the chest. And as the suspect continues to threaten the agent, he opens fire with a fourth shot. But watch where this shot goes. I need you to put your gun down. <laughs> The suspect has pled guilty. He recovered from his wounds, and he claimed, and he ended up pleading guilty to a reduced charge. He claimed he was suicidal, not homicidal, but then who really knows? He specifically asked for the physician who had refused him painkillers the night before. Now, and also, from that video, he did turn and point his weapon toward our agent. Now, the shooting was ruled justified, and now we get to do our Monday morning quarterbacking and reflect on just what happened. Now first, this is a classic proof for always being armed, on and off duty. How many times have you been to the ER with your, with your kid getting some stitches after some rough play or a game? In fact, sometimes your kid's getting the stitches. And think about it, whether you're at church, in a restaurant, in a hospital, being armed is essential because you don't know on or off duty when a confrontation like this is going to occur. And ERs seem to cause or have or be the center of a lot of confrontation. So I want you to be armed at all times, on and off duty. Next, the security officer did a great job of engaging the suspect. Now he kept talking and occupying the suspect by asking him questions about himself. And that's very important. The suspect wants to talk about himself, so engage him. Anytime you have a, 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 any kind of confrontational setting, get that man or that woman talking about themselves. That lowers the temperature and helps you gain control. And remember, this is a step you don't wait for negotiators to initiate negotiations. Building that human-to-human -human contact is a way to de-escalate any situation, so think about it all the time. Now third, the fourth shot can be seen coming through the wall in the direction of our security officer. Now this is further testimony to the importance of using cover. Cover protects you. It, number one, it gives you time to make decisions. It allows you to compensate for a suspect's offensive actions and it protects you. So cover is something we should practice on the range and mentally rehearse over and over again. Fourth, after the fight, remember, if any type of confrontation, if someone's hurt, initiate first aid. Now, this suspect had the distinct advantage of getting himself shot in an ER. 
And I'm sure the trauma surgeon appreciated that in treating the wounds. But I'm not sure I would want surgeons in the hospital I'd just been threatening operating on me. And this is something to think about is we always initiate first aid on ourselves, on our brothers and sisters, and even on the suspect. And finally, let's talk about the actual tactics of the agent. Now, all situations are ambiguous. I know that. And, and we never know what the suspect's thinking or what the actions of the suspect are going to be. The suspect gets to choose the level of force. And that's the thing. If you have a, a, a subject isolated and talking, it's best to establish a solid inner perimeter. We're going to contain this subject. And this is very important. Get the folks in route. But the thing is, again, the suspect's going to decide if something's going to happen. But let's don't initiate it unnecessarily. I go, always remember years ago when an instructor quoted Sun Tzu. He said, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. That's something to keep in the back of your mind whenever you have a deadly standoff like this. Now, ultimately, remember, it is the suspect who decides what the level of force we're going to use is. It's not our decision. Had the suspect dropped his gun, uh, after, had not dropped his gun, say, after the force shot by our agent, then it could have been a lot more violent a confrontation. On the other hand, if he'd have just dropped the weapon in the initial confrontation, he wouldn't have been shot three times. So here's what I want you to think about. Watch this video with your friends. Talk it over. See what you would do. How would you control that situation? What ways would you do to ne negotiate with the subject to get them calmed down? At the same time, how would you build a defensive perimeter, so to speak, to protect yourselves and the public against the suspect going mobile or going in an assaultive fashion? Everywhere you go, think not today. I will not succumb to the effects of routine degrading my performance. Your head's always going to be in the game, wherever you're at. And this video reminds us, somewhere as safe a sanctuary as we think at a hospital is, can deteriorate in a fraction of a second. So stay safe, and I'll see you again.